So today, we will not be going over that uh, crazy game of Ghoulies. We're actually going to be going over a very interesting game that sort of sounded, centered around influence, believe it or not. We're going to find a very, very interesting influential game here. Because sometimes in our games, yes, it is a really great way to tease you. That's one of the joys that I have in life. So, essentially, this game that I did pick, not the googly game there, FC, but this game that I did pick are probably going to feature players that you are completely unaware of, and I'm going to be putting their names in there right now. We had... Oh, I'm not going to I'm not gonna butcher their names. I'm, I'm above that. I no longer try. I have given up. I have resigned, as it were. All right, there we go. So we have two professional players here. Probably never heard of them, though you might from their name realize that they are in fact Chinese professionals. So there's that. And those of you who are on the stream, excuse me while I go back and actually advertise. There we go. So this game, influence oriented, like I mentioned, and I think we've all been in a game like this. It's a game where we wind up with no corners, which is usually a really, really odd place to be, because when we lose all of our corners, we know one thing and one thing only, that if we somehow don't use our influence very, 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 very well, we're screwed, right? So how are we going to use that influence? And that's what this game is going to address. You'll see in a minute there, Yannick. So in the beginning, we start off simply enough. A game which we've all probably played. And surprisingly, once again, can you believe that the low Chinese is not played here? I bet you can't. But are you surprised that the micro Chinese is still played here? No, you're probably not surprised at that either, because everything, and I do mean everything, is Chinese nowadays. So here we go. Variation of the uh, micro Chinese Fuseki. Pretty much. Pretty much uh, standard questions for white now. I see a Chinese opening on the board. I know that my opponent wants me to approach that 3-4 stone, so I'm not going to do that. I will split instead. In this case, by approaching. I mean, we could play here. And if we do play here, black has the option to choose which direction that he wants to poke at us. Is he going to poke at us from above and push us low? Is he going to go low and poke us up? I mean, it's nice little options for him. Instead, white approaches the corner, the 4-4 the four, four point, rather. Does allow black to pincer. And he does. He set up a bit of a framework in the bottom right-hand corner. He knows that he's interested in expanding on that framework, so the pincer makes complete sense. But it does also theoretically give up our corner, as we are going to see right now. Because obviously, and who can tell me why, white is not inclined to play this Draseki. Can anyone tell me why that is? Why is white not inclined to play this? Why do we not see this very often from professionals and only from amateurs? Why is that? Why is that? That Draseki is from Moyo Reductions. The white stones aren't doing anything. Both of these are correct. This Draseki is, is kind of a dangerous sequence to call an equal result. This is an equal result if there's something really, 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 really important going on here on the board that is forcing us to live in this immediate area. Such as, this is a really, really huge Moyo, 
we have to reduce it no matter what. We have a, a sequence at our disposal that will let us do that, right? We can settle here. But the board is still very much open. So just settling while we're giving our opponent territory and even giving our opponent really, 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 really great follow-ups to keep us essentially completely enclosed into just the whole settling thing, not a good idea. This is not an emergency situation. We don't have to settle for just two eyes. So instead, we either go into the corner or we reapproach, which is very, very common. A lot of players do make this mistake in playing this a lot. Unfortunately, not such a great idea. Just because it's called a Jiseki doesn't mean that you should play it in every sequ uh, situation. Why not directly at O17? What? Wait, what? Why not directly at O17 but R14 first? Uh, R14 what? Oh, okay. I see. Two different questions. You're asking why white doesn't just approach from here. Well, if we approach from here, that's a really good question to ask there, Peacock. If we approach from here, even if we have every single freaking uh, idea in mind that we're going to either go into the corner or we're going to reapproach, we are leaving Aji behind. So even, let's sit, go ahead and look at this Triseki. Um, well, we're going to go look at a different Triseki, but okay. Let's look at the one that's currently played in the actual game, and then now that that's played, let's assume that he didn't actually do that and he blocked it this way instead. There. Let's assume we block that way, and let's assume that we also give Black Sente to go off and do, you know, whatever else. The great thing about not simply approaching at O17 directly is that the Aji of R14 ensures we can get away with stuff, like we can threaten to connect to that stone, perhaps forcing Black to kill it off. And even in endgame, we have other great moves that we can play that is again going to force Black to kill it off. And as we're just forcing Black to kill it off over and over and over again, we're getting free moves, we're getting extra endgame, we might even get an invasion like we can see with R9, all those really, really great things. Whereas if we play just the approach on this side, let's say, and let's say this turns into a Jiseki, there we go. White has now given Black the option of simply continuing his front work. He can play a large move on the right-hand side. There's no Aji there. Any invasion is going to be all by its lonesome. It's not going to be threatening to connect up to anything. So Black will be able to immediately counterattack you. So the Aji remaining there is pretty nice. In this case, however, we don't actually block that way, in part because of the variations I showed you. Uh, also, as we see in the variation, real quick. Getting to the end of this, one second. There we go. As we see in this variation, we are getting a lot of the influence that we were looking for when we pincered. Uh, our corner has been taken, but it is enclosed, so that's also very nice. The other way, we're getting a wall. We don't get to enclose white. There's the Aji remaining. So this is usually the proper uh, way to actually block this and not here. Though it does look weird. It does look weird. Forming a wall here when we don't have this happy little extra stone at K16. Not something that you probably train yourself to even consider. But getting to enclose your opponent while you have that huge wall spanning half the board. Still a pretty good deal for you. And if you can hear the helicopter trying to land on my roof, I, I do apologize about that. All right, so white gets Sente. Everyone can uh, guess what we're gonna do now. White has Sente. We're probably not going to enclose because there's a huge wall. 
we're probably not going to approach because that's as suicidal as it was a moment ago when we completely ruled it out in favor of the approach with a 4-4 stone. Uh, K16, yes, K16 is the right idea. We have Sente. We can try and make it harder for Black to use the wall that he just gained for himself. We would not, for example, want to do this, but can anyone tell me why we don't want to do this? Because if we're looking to get rid of that wall, wouldn't making certain that our 017 stone being alive, that, that that's a good thing, right? Why is it a problem if we're too close to the wall? I mean, that's the whole idea. We want to be close to the wall to get rid of the thickness, yes? Isn't that the way we're supposed to play this game? Hmm. Black will squeeze us. And that would be very, very unfortunate. The two-space extension, sadly, and this may come as a shock to many a Q player out there, but a two-space extension is not immortal. It's not alive in and of itself, and being this close to a wall is in fact a problem. You are all quite correct. White can play 018, but even after 018 you are still not alive. This little weak group is going to be a very very heavy investment for White for the rest of the game, because he's going to be trying to kill you and profit by trying to kill you for the rest of the game. So instead, we're getting a little bit far away. It's like, Black can take a move at A if he really wants to try to do something against O17, that's fine. I don't mind. This is enough. It's all right. Black knows that A is not a very large move, so we have to decide what we are going to do. Are we going to approach on here? Are we going to enclose? Are we going to jump up? Are we going to approach the 3-4? What would you guys want to do? Can the Q13 stone... No, Q13 cut be a problem later on? Not really. At most, you're getting rid of an extra stone. At best, he's creating a weak group that you can harass and harass and harass. Alright. Peacock is apparently in dire need of... A doctor, he needs to be checked for rabies because he's very, very violent and wants to attack and attack and attack. I can admire that attitude there, Peacock. And we will get to that later. But the people who are a little bit more calm about their game are saying, you know what, we're just going to see what happens when we approach the corner first. We might get extra influence, we might get territory, we'll find out what White wants to do, and then decide. So those of you who want to approach the 3-4 stone, congratulations. It is a nice, safe move. This, on the other hand, is a very, very aggressive move. And the thing about this move is you can't lose Sente. Because if this lives, and if by this I of course mean white, if white lives, and you're living in Gote, so white gets to play a large move, that's kind of painful, because maybe we'll see an enclosure, maybe we'll see an extension. Hard to say, hard to say. But black approaches instead. Though it is good to know, uh, Peacock, that we have H17 there. But now we have to figure out what is white going to do. White can take territory, white can pincer, white can back off. White can play elsewhere. White can resign. So many different options. White plays a move that many would probably not consider. Why does white play f3? Doesn't it look like a very, very strange move? Why are we playing this? What is in it for us? What is the deal with this move? If you were playing white, what are you saying with your f3 move? If your opponent was playing it against you, what would he be saying with this move? Ah, uh, 
talkative to today. I actually had to scroll up and figure out what the comments were. Give me a minute. Um, Kenboy says I would consider this move. That's because Kenboy is a Dom level player, so he considers all the moves. Good strategy there, Kenboy. Trying to take Sente and reduce. Okay, get strength for the right on the right track. I am reducing the Black Moyo. Indeed, indeed. Let's go ahead and say that White said I wanted territory. Right? Fairly normal in most circumstances. We can say this is just this is a Jaseki, right? I am going to just take my territory like I've seen in a billion other games. But unlike those billion other games, we can fall into the avalanche. And even if our opponent wants us to do the avalanche, we can say, no, 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 no. We're not doing the avalanche. I just want the influence because, holy crap, look at all of that that I have. I have just obtained influence over most of the board. So you have to reduce this huge, huge area. So White says, you know, maybe I can play like this. Maybe my reduction is uh, on par to handle a game like this. But there is no reason for me to put myself in a position where I suddenly have to reduce all of that. So I'm going to back off, and he can't get more influence here. So pretty straightforward. Looks low, looks slow, but we see what it does. Without all of this extra influence here, this probably would be low, and it probably would be slow. But because we have to think about that influence, it's actually a pretty good move. Essentially, long story short, White is realizing that he is not the only person playing this game, and he is reading the board correctly. But I still don't get why not g3. You could play g3. Admittedly, you can. It does leave a few extra, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, follow-ups for your opponent, for example. I mean, you do have this kind of thing, potentially, where maybe black still does get some extra influence. Could be possible. Gotta be careful of that. White played f3 because he's looking to, re to leave the least amount of forcing moves to his opponent as possible. So Black says, well, I guess I'm not getting influence here. Uh, I guess that means I have to settle, right? Makes sense, sure. So I'm going to settle and take my base. Doesn't get to keep building up his influence. All right. White's turn. He gets to look for all of those awesome things that we're always looking for whenever we have Sensei. We're looking for those weak groups. We're looking for forcing moves. We're looking to see what's big and what's large. So the first thing we have to ask ourselves is, are there any weak groups on the board? Which we can pretty well answer no. We know that Black's group, not weak. Nothing's around it. Nothing's threatening it. Pretty strong for the moment. This wall, unless we add a lot of extra stones on the board, we know this wall is in no danger. So there's no weak groups. So any sente moves, anything that's large, white decides this is pretty well uh, a sente move. Black doesn't want me to, you know, cut through here and uh, start reducing. That'd be bad if I get free Ataris and jumps in and things of that nature. So okay, sure. That's a forcing move. So it gets that in for free. Now he has a decision to make. Basic decision. Do I reduce this? Or do I expand this? What are you guys feeling? Reduction or expansion? Dylan and FC both say reduction. Roven and Twitchigo counter with expansion. Kemboy says expansion. It's too early, says reduce. Wow, okay, that's that's actually funny. Your name is actually amusing. 
by you suggesting that you want to reduce, are you also implying that it's too early to reduce? Huh. I'll have to think about that one for a while. Whichever is correct. Good answer! White decides that he is in fact going to reduce. He has decided that if I do not reduce all of this, what is going to happen is I can take myself to go away, thank you. I can take myself an enclosure, which I know currently has a lot of different ways to be reduced. Does Black's position have just as many places to be reduced? He probably felt a little bit uncomfortable that maybe it doesn't, and if we're not careful it can expand. So he plays here, a nice, calm response. Oh, sorry, someone guessed p5? Did Merrick? Oh, Merrick did get p5, I'm sorry. Congratulations, Merrick. Yeah, Merrick was just, wow, Merrick spammed p5 like three times in a row. He was very, very insistent. So with this reduction, he's saying that I have Mii. I think everyone can see that. That either I'm going to drop down and split you, or I can split you this way. I can go A or I can go B. So pretty good. Hard to respond to as white, or as black, sorry. We have to figure out which, which is more important is developing one important or is developing two more important and how do we know how do we make these deci decisions in our games hmm rovin flip a coin believe it or not i was told back when i was first learning how to play go to do exactly that if I just really couldn't decide about two different things, just flip a coin and review it after the game. Probably not a good idea to do in a professional, uh, in a professional game. Hopefully by that point you're not still doing it, though it would be funny if it was happening. I would really love to see a pro, like, on TV, just flip a coin to decide where he's going to play. Would that be considered bad manner? Yeah, I suspect it would be really, really rude. Anyway, uh, in lieu of doing that, it looks like we are saying that one M... I can still run M3 out in emergency. Yep, there's plenty of room there. That's true. Um, the bigger side seems to be more important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since we have two choices, we can play A, or we can play... take off B. There we go. Or we can play B. Black goes with B, probably because he didn't want to be kept low. This looks like it's too simple, right? We can easily start picking out a shape here. So instead... Black plays uh, for the right-hand side. A lot of territory to be had there. And bl white can't get a base this way. White pushes on the fourth line. That's fine. Fourth line territory, rumor has it, is a good thing. Right? We're not gonna... We're not gonna care. I like fourth line... Oh, shoot. Wah, wah, wah. Bye bye, tree. Ah, lasted 33 moves. I really should start. Uh, really should start a betting pool on when I do this. Yeah, anyway, Black plays the Hane because he's trying to get as much as humanly possible. 
White decides to say something very, very odd, though. White says, I do want to settle here in your corner. To which Black says, go right ahead. I had faith in me, too. I had faith in me, too. I'm sorry. White takes the corner. Black takes the outside. White moves to live. Black drops down. And just like that, white gets to live. However, once again, we are in that position that I mentioned earlier when I first started the game. That position where we find all of our corners are gone. We do have influence, but how much is that influence really going to be worth, and what are we going to do about that? We have to do something very, very large with our influence. Peacock, what are we going to do if you are still there? Me Peacock doesn't know. Lies. Lies. He knows exactly what we are going to do. We are going to attack at H17, just as Peacock wanted to do originally. So yes, you had very good instincts. You saw the huge wall, you saw the stones that could be attacked. Little bit too early there, though. Little bit too early. Good try, though. Right ideas, right ideas. But now we have to decide what's important. We could... attack? Yeah, Peacock got that one, sorry. He got it before I even asked a question on this move. That is how far ahead Don level players can read, you see. He wasn't answering for the previous one. He was reading my questions on move 43. If you want to be a Don level player, learn how to do that too. As for here, we have a nice simple question, how do we handle this stone? Who's up for defending the corner? Anyone want to defend the corner? Yay, we have one defense for the corner. Kemboy still considering. Hmm. The problem is this. If we do defend the corner, what is black going to do? Black's probably going to keep attacking us, and we can't live locally. So letting Black to continue attacking us seems like a bad idea. So forget that. White says I'm jumping. Because if we do something like this, Black, unfortunately, is not going to be kind enough to just jump out. It would be really, really great if he was. But even if he does something like the shoulder hit, just kind of teasing you into cutting him, he's going to be okay. Because if you have to attach and work against this stone, he's going to be happy. Oh, did I say shoulder hit? Hmm. Why did I say shoulder hit? Hmm. Because I was thinking about shoulder hit. We could do that too to prevent connection. I'm thinking he wouldn't do that though. I'm thinking that he would do the new shoulder hit that looks suspiciously like a small knight move and probably go ahead and uh, play that instead. Yes, the high shoulder hit. Thank you, Nazumi. Exactly what I was saying. All right, so white jumps out. Now it's black's turn. We don't want to be surrounded. So we're jumping out too. And white takes a gamble. 
The minute White plays this move, dinner bells should be ringing in all of your heads. What do you do? This is your time. You got all of that thickness. You wanted a weak group to attack. He freaking played away. So what do we do? I will give you a hint. We do not say, Oh gosh, the right side! I'm gonna go play over there! Or the left side, for example. Bad ideas. We do not play away when we have things to attack. Uh, someone said it. Merrick, who has a cheat sheet open. Okay, wait, no, forget forget Merrick. Go Bandit said before Merrick did. Okay. Anyone else said before he did? Alright. Go Bandit. Awesome. We can, in fact, play the new shoulder hit that we have just learned about. Now again, this does allow you to be cut. But there are a couple of really fun things about this. It's like, can we be cut? Sure, obviously, yes, we can. But do we really have to care about being cut when we get to surround? Or do we have to really be cut when we can still even settle here? Probably not. Probably not. If he wants to create even more complication here by creating more weak groups to worry about when we know we're going to be fine, that's cool. Now you might say to yourself, but are we really going to be fine? I mean, is that really a foregone conclusion? Well, let's take a look at that. White plays here. Let's say black play or white plays here instead. Now the question is, how are we going to settle? The outside, we have lots of influence. So the outside stones, not the critical stones. The critical stones are the inside stones that have to live. So let's say, I don't know, white does something. Let's say white seduces us into a grout, into like agreeing to let him get two moves in a row, and we find ourselves having to live here. With as much room that's actually here, you can see you got a fairly uh, healthy base. Even before considering can I get out? We can still see that we are getting a really, really great base here. We can probably live locally. And since we know that we can probably live locally, and since we're probably not actually going to be seduced into passing, our inside stones should be perfectly fine. As long as we don't do something rather goofy like playing away. So this is where F17 comes into play, because we had a base that we could get. White is saying, I'm going to remove that base from you. Now you have to worry about being cut. So surely, surely you're going to go and play this move now, yeah? I mean, we can be cut. We have to get rid of it. So, got to protect the cut point. Yes, and he's trying to do it in Sentai. As Kenboy mentioned, this is also threatening to connect up. That is true. It is doing two things at once. Which is probably why Rukus wants to play H18 to deny the connection underneath. Black instead says, no, I'm going to follow up and just kill you. Because if you're dead, you're not a threat to me anymore. He's also playing it for a very specific reason that he can now connect up as well. So white says, well, I can connect up here. How about that? And black does something really, really cool. Amidst all of this, the past couple of uh, lectures we've been exploring this really, really great idea where even while you're attacking, you're not going all in. A uh, wonderful, wonderful... Uh, phrase that any gambler is probably well familiar with. 
Essentially, we're not going to attack this and attack this and attack this until the entire board is ruined, he's alive, and then we realize we've got nothing left. While we're attacking this, we're going to do really, really cool things like keep building. It's like, okay, yes, you might be alive there. You can play your connection move. I'm going to get Sensei, and I'm going to keep building up that huge middle that you're, you've just given me. I'm fine with this. I'm attacking, I'm profiting. If you don't make yourself 100% alive, I'll just resume attacking you. Not going to be greedy. Not going to attack you immediately right now until you just uh, wiggle yourself everywhere and ruin everything in the middle. He's going to go about it in a nice, calm, and collected manner. White jumps out because he knows he's in trouble. But now black has follow-ups. Ooh, very, very close FC. Very, very close. He's using uh, Sente first, or the tent, the word looking for. Uh, the forcing move there first, the potential connection underneath that F18. That is how you're going to live in this shape. Because white blocks it. And then... Uh, Yes, he did. Congratulations. Alright, what were they saying? Oh, right, so there's the connection uh, that we are now obviously threatening. And again, white asked to decide are we letting him connect up or are we going to keep killing him? White says we're going to make this hard as possible for him to live. But there is an issue here. Despite the severity of his moves, the question now remains, can we actually kill this? That's a bit of a tough life and death, que life and death question there to ask. Weakness at E16 stick out at me. Uh, E16, the cut point. Yes, the cut point is very, very important. I'm going to say yes, otherwise he'd play, uh, he wouldn't play empty triangle. H14. That's an interesting idea there. The 9 key's got a very uh, fascinating idea. He's saying, you know what, this is probably going to be alive. Forget the corner, I'm going to attack. Unfortunately, if that is your idea, you do want to make certain that you are nice and strong first, as we see white do here. Black goes back and lives. Now, if we do want to go back and kill this, we have one or two little problems. Um, how would we kill this? I guess we would try this way, I guess. Anyone have a better method of trying to kill this? Uh, playing B19? Okay, yeah, that, 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 that yeah, that's actually a much better method because you're threatening to hook up underneath there. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Roundhouse kick it. I like that one too, yeah. Uh, we can't play there, otherwise we connect up, and as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty friggin' dead. Uh, we have to connect, I guess? But there's still that cut point, which is a slight issue. I mean, we can throw in, connect, but unless we're gonna connect this out, 
That's hideous. Never show me that shape again. Oh, what shape? This shape? Okay. I'll take a drink and let uh, Merrick stare at this for a while. There we go. Ah, uh, so yeah, how do we kill this? I forgot. Do we go here? Hmm. When I first read this out, I thought it was because of this. That black had the option of just connecting underneath. But maybe I was wrong. So, black is back. Make certain he's alive. White, who was the 9Q that said that? Uh, one second, I have to go back and help and look. Uh, yeah, Rotolark wanted to go back and attack H14. And now that White is nice and strong, he's going to do exactly that. Go back and attack H14. So it should come to no surprise that White is not going to find Black simply getting greedy and continuing along uh, this line here. Instead, there we go, instead Black's going to go back to attack the other group to get stronger, get his group out of danger. So we have forcing move, connect, forcing move, nice way to get stronger. Black connects up underneath. White Hanes, black cuts. And then it gets very, very odd. Because we don't have the normal sequence here, right? White isn't just trying to do this. Because if he did, uh, let's, I don't know, go this way, I guess. Because if he did, he'd be in a lot of trouble. He would live, sure, obviously, but everything in the center would be cut off, and that's not good. So we do not want to play this variation. Instead, we're just moving to try to cut everything off. So now everything's happily cut off. White is happily connecting up. Everything is still happily cut off. However, black can't connect. Has to let take. And what are we going to go into? Can everybody say a co? No, you can't, because if you're on my Twitch channel, I've banned that word. So there's that. So white connects, and we go to co. Yes, I really banned the... No, it's not that I'm banning people for saying co on my Twitch channel. I'm... It, it's treated as profanity. It just gets uh, blocked out. So you're not allowed to say it on my Twitch. Awesome. Makes my life so much happier. Uh, see, that and Tengen, uh, not allowed to say it. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, so white connects up. Yep, that's another one. So white connects up. Uh, let's see. I'm missing something. No, I'm not. It's. Oh, I am missing something. I killed the tree because I wasn't paying attention. We go here first, and then we go over, and then we take. 
White connects. Black says I don't want to be surrounded. Ah, eh, tree's already been gone, Chachi. It lasted like 30 moves. Black retakes, or white retakes. Black decides to come out. White says I keep you in. Black says I leave. White fixes its cut points. Black comes out to connect, make certain that the counterattack can't happen against his middle group. And it looks like from here that everything is actually working out pretty well. I mean, we had a huge middle we had to reduce. We've reduced it. Now the question seems to be how much actual territory did uh, Black pick up while we were reducing him? And you can see here that Black is still bent on fighting the Ko. White is similarly bent on fighting the Ko. And you can see why. If we back up one move and picture this connected, then this whole group is under severe attack. I mean, Black will have to play like some defensive move here at Q9 to connect up and make certain he doesn't die. And if he has to play a defensive move here, that's so bad for Black. He can't get the counterattack. White gets to play another free move in the middle wherever he wants, or just continue reducing. A uh, large move on the bottom, maybe. Whatever he wants. So he plays in the corner. Black says, yep, that's threatening. But I'm going to attack the middle first. So white responds. Black responds as well. We are now threatening to cut. White actually takes, or not takes, sorry, connects, allowing the cut. This was such a huge decision. Because white is assuming that that is going to be Sente. But black says, no. I'm going to let you cut me. So white says, okay, this is now for your entire group in the middle. But black says, no, this is for your entire group in the middle. You can go ahead and cut me. But if you want my group in the middle, you're going to have to fight for it. And now I can use my threats to threaten your group in the middle. So this just took a really, really strange turn. And if white wants that profit, he's got to play Gote to do it. So white profits, black connects, and suddenly we've got a fairly large profit here uh, going on in the center of the board. The question now is how large is this actually going to be? Well, white says I'm going to make certain that this turns into as little as possible. Forcing black to respond. and then ensure in the corner is killed. Now we have a problem. Black has to make use of all of that dare influence. How are we going to do it? Oh, FC and Rukus both say G4. Though oddly enough, Yannick is more of a pacifist. He says G5. It's like, you know what? I, I could come at you very, very aggressively with G4. That might be Sente. But that's too violent. I'm going to play the high shoulder hit instead. Yes. 
But no, we're going to play the true shoulder hit. The shoulder hit that would actually earn you respect from every player who walked into your game and saw this. Because this is devastating. It's forcing... And lets you just build up all that their influence. The low shoulder hit. Oh my god. These terms are going to get out and people are going to be complaining. You already use the semi Atari. Oh, wonderful. Anyway, I should write, yeah, I should write a book about new go terms. That's, that's a good idea. Oh, so this is a forcing move. White has to respond. So white responds, which forces black to be even stronger in the middle. We can't jump in there. There's nowhere to jump into. Our only other way into that center was from this move, and it's gone, because we can't just play a move somewhere in here and hope it connects to something. It's impossible. Now, there is one uh, consolation. Do we actually have a good... Okay, we don't. Score estimator, you are... <sighs> Score estimator, how can you do that to me? How do you, how do you kill off a group and give the territory to your opponent, to the thing that just died. Why are you written like that? Oh well, suffice it to say, the score estimator is right in that. That's its way of giving Aji, but you don't have to capture it. Oh well. Suffice it to say, the score estimator is wrong about how far apart the score is, but it is right that Black does have a very nice lead right now. I mean, he's going to pick up a few more points on the bottom. There are a few nice reductions, but there's no way to break in the dat there middle. Stay calm and play endgame, so says Kemboy. You are in fact right. So much so that this game continues to the very end. It goes all the way. Yes, I watched too much Day 9, I'm sorry, Nazumi. Uh, so much so that this game actually goes all the way to endgame. All the way right before scoring, and then he resigns. Like, r literally on that move. Now... Usually, when I see that in pro games, I just assume, no, he, he, maybe he didn't really, maybe, maybe the person that was keeping track of the game just didn't want to record the actual score and just said, yeah, he resigned here. But yeah, it goes all the way to the end. Now, I, on the other hand, since nothing actually happened besides, like, 30 moves of endgame, I know some of you really, really love Endgame. Uh, I'm not going to go through it. Instead, I will give out the link as to where you can find this game if you want to look at all of uh, that wonderful Endgame goodness. Uh, which I should have had a link open and prepared for, but because I'm not the most prepared person in the world, I don't actually have that. So now I'm going to babble on inanely while I hop on to go for go and search for a link. So, yeah, there's that. Ooh, there's a Ghoulie game. That's the one that I'll be going over later in my uh, How to Study Pro Game series. How to Study Games That Confuse Us series, I should say. Ooh, there it is. Yahtzee. So, anyone who wants to look at the game in its entirety, you can find it there. Like I mentioned, goes all the way to endgame. I would love to see more casual games as well. I really do need to 
do that. I had a really, really great idea that this month I was going to be starting over my World Bidduck series, since I don't really have any videos of that anymore. I was going to create a 5 on account and start there, but then I wasn't able to get a new account from World Bidduck. They're kind of on to my shenanigans, I think, and just not letting me create any more new accounts. Sad. KGS, I, uh, not blaming this on Inazuma. I'm not playing this, I'm not blaming this on Inazuma at all. But she really hasn't been in the mood for a KGS game. She has these weird spurts she goes through where she feels like playing Go, then doesn't, and now it's kind of a doesn't. But I'll probably do those regardless. I'll probably do those regardless. I might get... I don't think you get matched up against me anymore. I mean, what's my uh, the account there now? Um, what's my... Oh yeah, I was wiring. Uh, yeah, I'm currently a 3 done on here now. I am ready for a 3 done. No, I need to... Actually, no, I'm ready for a 2 done game. That's right. Next game, I was going to force myself to play a 2-don. I was going to actually only accept a request from a 2-don. So I can get at least uh, one good 2-don game on here before I hit the 3-don. Uh, here on uh, KGS, I have a series that I've been recording very, very intermittently. But it's currently 3-don question mark because it's skipped 2-don. So I need to find myself a 2-don and play them for uh, part of my series. Maybe Peacock. He was pretty good. Maybe I'll, uh... Uh, do you know how many stone there tag I'm done as compared to KJS done? Alright, that is another question that I get constantly What are the difference uh, between the servers. Some people will, like, point you to this website or that website and say, you know, there's no... But the difference is here, it's mathematical. I don't think it is. I think it's how you handle the different style of play. Like someone who is really, really good at making uh, fairly laid back games where there's frameworks and reductions, things like that, probably can do very, very well here on KGS. But if your fighting is utter garbage, then when these really, really aggressive uh, players on like Tygem, for example, come at you, you might crumble against something that you shouldn't or you wouldn't normally uh, expect to lose to on, for example, KGS. Whereas the reverse might can be true. If you're really, really awesome at fighting and you just don't know what to do when they don't fight you, like it tends to be the case on KGS, then you might not do as well because you have that little weakness in your play. You're just not used to playing that way. I think it's more about that than really anything else. But that's just me. Kaya. I play better on Tygem too. I don't know what... You keep saying that word. I have no idea what server that is. Uh, let me look it up. Uh, oh, fly or die? What is fly or die? What am I staring at? Eight ball pool snooker. What? Pente? Oh, Reversi? Serious? Okay, there's actually go there. Oh my god, what is this? A new Yahoo? Oh my god. This is a new Yahoo, isn't it? Alright, maybe I'll do a flyer dice series. What are those characters on those stones?
I don't know. It means fire and water. Please don't. All right, maybe. Wait, fly or die? Why is that name familiar? Frozen Soul plays on there. Frozen Soul trolls on there. I remember that now. I'll have to ask him about that. Oh, shoot. Was that a secret? Oh, crap. I'm sorry. <laughs> did he not did he not want anyone else to know um where's his skype window uh if anyone asks just say you don't play on um, fly or die no reason ah save myself Anyway, thank you all for stopping by. Dictation, not the best of the live mic. True. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this game. I will, of course, have it up on my YouTube account within a day or so. And I will see you all happy people the week after next.